Now, hey there, Bruce. Welcome back to Broken Minds. If you watched the last episode, you'll know that we got a bad ending. We got an ending, but I think it was a bad ending. But <clears throat> we also unlocked the flowchart for the game, which you are seeing right here, which is different from the flowcharts I'm used to, shall we say. Uh, it doesn't let you jump into mid middle of the game anywhere at all. It just kind of lets you map out what you need to do to get to each ending and each each of these points in the star is an ending with a different emotion and you need to get all of those before you can get the true ending so we did not get the true ending we got a bad ending we got a, a guilty ending so what we need to do is jump in and to choose our emotion we need to pick two different ones here so if we pick this one and this one then we get this one if we pick this one and this one we get this one uh, this one and this one, we get this one. This one and this one, we get that one. This one and this one. And these two, that one. I'm not sure how we get this one. Those two, right. Uh, uh, yeah, so we need to run through all of the all of the options. Uh, so I'll s I don't know how much it actually changes in the story, but I'll skip through it to the, the bits that are new each time because I'll have to jump back in and just skip through the whole thing because like I said, it doesn't let you jump in at all. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to jump in and start making choices and just see what happens. Alright, here we go. We'll go from here because this is the ending bit and even though there are some new lines as I go through the game, there's not enough to really make it worth stopping. It's just a slight change, you know? Plus we'll have to do a proper run through when we get the true ending, I imagine. Anyway, we'll see. Let's see what happens. This should be our bleak ending, which it should be a, a innocent ending, I think. Ready to continue the investigation? No, Noah. What do you mean, no? I can pay you. That's not it, moron. Well, this is the same too. Skip. The answer is simple. It's what I thought all along. It's Uzumaki. So that's really it? That's your whole night's worth of work amounted to? Yeah. You got a problem with that? Excuse me. It was a long night. I understand. <laughs> Do you? Right. Well, it's done. You know Uzumaki did it. These detectives are idiots. What have been the use of all my hints? How many times could I say I didn't do it with a giant wink and a nudge before these simpletons got the memo? I was only, ha only humiliating myself. What was the point anyway? I could save my time in other ways than prison. Maybe it was for the best. But then again, Uzumaki didn't deserve to have his name dragged through the mud for me. Let's all sleep now. You can't do that yet. I didn't get much sleep either, but a bad dream? Yeah, but I need to know your reasoning. Oh, but I'm so tired. Can't you give us a rest? This is another test. He wanted me to ask. If I didn't, I'd make a poor detective. It was true that being around the detectives was more fun than I had had in a while, but I wasn't particularly thrilled about being part of their agency. And why couldn't Takuma just ask me outright instead of these silly games? But whatever. It wasn't like I was going to do anything better with my life. Very well. I had to accept Takuma's challenge. Takuma, please understand. I need to know how he killed them. That's what closure is, isn't it? Yes, I suppose so. Fine. I'll explain. Wait. Let me get a box of tissues. <laughs> Shut up, Yuzuki. What do we know about Dr. Uzumaki? <laughs> He's the terrible therapist with the inferiority complex. Or possible narcissism. We know he was an orphan. We know he was close to Noah. We know he had opportunity. Tell her the profile, Ube. Sure. I believe you wanted to kill your parents, Noah, because he saw himself as a paternal figure to you. A paternal figure, but also in a way, your child. That makes no sense. It's an oxymoron. How can he be both my parent and my child? I said in a way. You're so literal. What I meant was, he was playing the role of a parent who had a close relationship with their child. He was confused. He wanted to relate to you in a way only orphans can, but he was slowly becoming a parent himself. That's why soon after killing your real parents and making you an orphan, he had to commit suicide. That makes sense, I suppose, in a twisted logic way. But still, why did you say he was my child? Just ignore it. It's too complex anyway. Can the snark, Umo. You shouldn't say stupid things and then expect Noah to let you off the hook. You're right. I'm sorry. It was the first time I'd heard Umo apologize. Interesting. He was looking up to you initially. He told things to his patients. At first, I thought it was the reverse. It was reverse therapy using up his patient's time for his own problems. But it's deeper than that. Uzumaki saw all of his patients as surrogate parents. Well, patient. The only person he was seeing besides you was a little girl named Amane K Kirishima. 
I saw it on his computer. Wouldn't you see that? But that changed with you. For some reason he began to think of you as a child. That's what I meant, Noah. Why do you think it is, even though you look so old? Hey, I don't look that old. I thought the very same thing. How do you know all of this, Ume? Was there a file somewhere on his comp computer explaining his psychology? No. Have you ever heard of fan fiction? I've tried to unhear it. Well, I write it. In my head. About people. To me, every person is like a character, even myself. Coming up with their backstory comes naturally. So you're saying your theory is completely worthless? Oh, <laughs> not quite. It's based on reality. The playful nature of the office, suggested by that indoor pool. That was Uzumaki's doing. In other words, he was a child at heart. And from what you told us before, he was constantly seeking approval. Sounds about right to me. But what about the shift from child to parent? Why else would he kill himself? Because he didn't want to get caught? Remember, he killed himself after I hired you. Maybe you realized it wasn't worth it. The idea behind the letter was essentially for you to join him in his misery, right? How could you do that if he was dead? First, he chose to deal with his distress by creating a fellow orphan to bond with, in you. Then he offs himself as soon as a small complication arises? That doesn't seem right. He knew there'd be an investigation. It was inevitable as soon as he murdered your parents. So why would he have suddenly changed his whole plan for something he would have predicted? Because something happened that he didn't predict. Obviously, it's because he realized who he had become to you. Wow. You really want this to make sense? Because it will. It's cool. It also kind of fits the facts. You may have so motivated to solve your case, Noah. Please, please, please give her a chance. She's doing her best. Thanks a lot, Yuzuki. Don't waste time with half-dipped Pocky. It doesn't matter what Noah thinks. All the evidence points to Uzumaki performing the murder, regardless of his motives. I'm listening. When you first saw the rabbit, you probably assumed he was there to tease you as he burned your house down. Something like that, I guess. He wasn't. He was there to kill your parents the easy way. With a gun. First, he tapped on your window. He wanted you as close to him as possible. A poor shot, no doubt. Just as you are about to kill them, though. Noah's rice cooker produced an ungodly amount of steam. Noah shouted fire because that's what she thought it was. Uzumaki was scared off. He didn't want to risk killing you in the chaos. Huh? That actually does make some sense. You're better detectives than I thought. You're welcome. See, Noah? There's no way to counter that. Perfectly explains the rabbit's behavior. Well, why is it we going to shoot this theory down? Because what if you're not right? You can't rush this conclusion. Uzumaki was a very sensitive person. Maybe not the best moral character out there, but still. If there's even a small chance he didn't do it, I have to prove him innocent. So prove Takuma wrong, Noah. It's the least you can do after all of this complaining. Okay, then I will. I can't wait to hear it. Just give me a second. Time to convince him of Uzumaki's innocence. If I failed this time, giving up would become more in a more enticing solution. Takuma claimed Uzumaki was waiting outside the window. The door was unlocked and the house was isolated. He could have just walked inside. Takuma claimed Uzumaki shot my parents with a gun. A neighbor would have heard the sound of the gun. People in my neighborhood tend to mind their own business. They probably wouldn't have responded to hearing gunshots, and apparently they didn't because nobody complained. Where would he got a gun from? Let's go with that then. I could successfully play devil's advocate, since I'd figured out how best to counter Takuma's logic. Our bridge isn't built until you've walked over it. There's a bit of a problem with this theory you have. If Uzumaki had a gun, why did he stand around outside? We were unarmed. He could have just entered through the door. Why shoot us through the win through the window, is what I'm asking. If Ume's amazing motivation deduction is correct, then he couldn't have just gone in. He had to be sure he would shoot your parents, not you. That's why you need to see you through the window. It doesn't matter anyway, because all the other evidence points to him. To claim that him shooting from the window negates all other evidence, it's like saying hating an entire idol group just because you don't like Saya-chan. Okay, well, what about the thing your entire argument rests upon? The gun. Where would he get a gun? And that's a good refute. Guns aren't exactly easy to procure here. But not impossible. Impossibility is the air we detectives breathe. Is it likely that he wouldn't be able to get a gun? Yes. I get your point, but shouldn't we still try to prove it to Noah? We didn't find a gun anywhere. If there was no gun, like she said, the theory unravels. I'm more of a coroner than a ballistics expert. Gee, thanks for the information, Yuzuki. We're all wondering that. But I've never seen bullet marks like that at a crime scene before. I don't know what sort of gun could have made them. That sounds important. Why didn't you mention it before? Because when it comes to bullets, I really don't know what I'm talking about. Yuzuki was finally being helpful. Now I wouldn't have to rely on my own subtle hints. Your opinion has been noted. Oh, good. I'll explain everything, Noah. Don't worry. I can solve this case. 
I hope you can, Takuma. I really hope you can. I'm going to address your biggest concern right out of the gate, Noah. The gun. We didn't find any evidence of a gun in Uzumaki's office, and the bullet marks left at the crime scene were unusual. Yuzuki, what do they look like? Odd shaped. What kind of odd were they shaped like? Assorted things. Objects. On Hiroki's sad, sad corpse. They look like bits of metal. Bits of glass. Stones. Other hard things that cause horrible pain. Thank you, Yuzuki. That's just what I suspected. Just what you suspected? You just suspected it? How did you just suspect that? I didn't just suspect it. I was counting on that answer ever since Yuzuki brought up the strange bullet marks. Well, like a minute ago. Ironically, the one thing that Yuzuki doesn't know about is the one thing that she got right. What have you figured out, Takuma? Uzumaki didn't need a license. If he made the gun himself. What? A handmade gun? It's entirely within the realm of possibility. I've even heard stories of prisoners making guns out of stolen utensils and fingernail dirt. And hair. Yes, and hair. You can't make a gun without a good helping of hair. <laughs> Take your word for it. <laughs> so, Noah, do you agree with me that this is possible? Takuma was slipping further and further away from the truth. Could he climb out of ignorance without my help? Yes, it's possible. But is it right? Excellent, you agree with me. So, after shooting your parents with this gun, which coincidentally results in a heart attack caused by sheer terror, I'll buy the heart attack, but you forgot about the poison. I have an explanation for the poison. It's simple. That Yuzuki is incorrect. Huh? Hiroki may have had some of Noriko's lipstick on, for whatever private reason of his, and perhaps it was even toxic. After all, it burned your hand, though. But poisoning them after shooting them is ridiculous. That means that Yuzuki was completely wrong about the cause of death. In any case, if I'm choosing between Yuzuki is wrong and Uzumaki is also poisoned Hiroki with lipstick for some reason, then I'll go with the former. I'm pretty sure I wasn't wrong. How sure? About as sure as an umbrella shelters you from the rain when you're cold and alone? So about 20%? I thought so. As always, Yuzuki's incompetence slows down the investigation. Give yourself a pat on the shoulder, Yuzuki. I'll need one after the cruel thing you just said. I feel bad for her, man. Anyway, as has been established, Uzumaki shot your parents with his handmade gun right after I left your apartment, Noah. Then he drove to, his to this office and delivered the letter himself. It did seem like convenient timing. But if he did all that, what were you doing, Takuma? I was enjoying my walk back to the office. Walking helps clear the mind. So does pacing. How much of your walk was pacing? About as much as you are dry after using an umbrella during a rainstorm. You mean to say you could have actually witnessed Uzumaki delivering the letter? If you hadn't been pacing around aimlessly? Is that true, Takuma? I admit nothing. In any case, doesn't this timeline make sense? Uzumaki had a lot of time before Noah's killing Noah's parents. He could have been planning this for months. And he needed to, to make that gun. It probably takes a while to figure something like that out. I truly believe that this is the answer. What do you think, Noah? Is this watertight so far? Or is it a measly umbrella of a deduction? It's plausible. Uzumaki was not guilty. Takuma was a lot better than Ume at stretching, out con stretching to conclusions. But even his limber brain had a few stiff ligaments. Ew. It was time to give him a workout. Takuma claimed Uzumaki made his own gun. Where would he hide the gun? It wouldn't have been difficult. Okay. Not that one then. Where would he have learned to make a gun? I guess this is set before YouTube, right? Takuma claimed- I'm sure you can learn how to make a gun on YouTube. You can learn anything on YouTube. Takuma claimed Uzumaki ran off because he heard me shout fire. I didn't shout fire. I told Ume I had when I- oh, okay. Why would he run off if he knew the fire, 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 was, fire was fake? No? How would he have heard me through the glass? I mean, he should be able to hear you through the glass. Takuma claimed Uzumaki entered the house through the window after you left. How would he have done it without hurting himself? Takuma claimed Uzumaki shot my parents dead. Didn't know how to shoot, shrapnel wouldn't have killed them. But Yuzuki claimed that they were killed by poison and a heart attack? Takuma claimed Uzumaki delivered the letter to the YDP YPDA. Was there a huge risk he'd get caught? Once Takuma took a bit of an ego hit, then he would get onto the right track. That's what I thought anyway. Hmm. Do you have a problem with the points that I just laid out or not? Looks like the face of defeat. Is it the face of defeat? No, it's the face of I just had to think about it for a minute or two, but now I'm ready to counter. 
The detectives didn't laugh. I decided to never try to be funny again. You were trying to be funny? I like the handmade gun idea, but there are still a few problems. Problems that can be swept under a rug or problems that bite you under the sheets. The sheet biting problems for sure. First of all, how would Dr. Uzumaki know how to make a gun himself? Are you implying he went to prison? How would he test it without anyone noticing? It would be much easier for him to just pick up a kitchen knife and stab my parents. Sorry to be grotesque, but it's true. Just pick up a knife, huh? Mm, I didn't really consider that, I guess. But even if he did make a gun, because he just had to for some reason, your reasoning about him being scared off makes no sense. How would he hear me call out fire from outside the window? It wasn't broken yet, remember? Do you have like... Do you have like soundproofed windows? That's pretty cool. Wish I had soundproof windows. And speaking of which, it was still broken when my parents died. He would have been crawling through a window still sprinkled in glass, right? If that weren't enough, I can't believe you're ignoring the autopsy report completely. Just saying Yuzuki is wrong doesn't cut it. The autopsy report said that they died from poison and a heart attack. You can't just cast that aside like it means nothing. Oh, thank you, Noah. You are standing up for me and I appreciate that so very much. Are you done? No, I'm not. If Uzumaki delivered the letters to the doorstep, there was a huge chance of his whole plan getting screwed up. What if I'd answered the door faster and seen him? What if Ume saw him? It'd be hard for him to explain why he was delivering that letter to me. Speaking of the letter, it's just plain weird. Why would he tell me what he'd done? Why make such a big deal out of how I'm an orphan? Especially since he wasn't an orphan at all. What? My precious motive out the window? But how? It's true. I'm sorry, but I was mistaken earlier. Even though Dr. Uzumaki talked about being an orphan, he was lying to me. I saw it on his computer. Telling this lie could ruin their entire argument. But that's precisely what I wanted to do. Because they were wrong about everything. Good point, Snower, but perfectly dismantleable. I'm looking forward to hearing your explanation. Let me address your counterpoints in order. First, how did Dr. Uzumaki learn to make a gun that way? There are any number of ways he could have done so. Maybe he did go to prison. We don't know much about his past. Yeah, because of your poor detective work. In any case, Noah, even though I can't prove he knew how to make a gun, how hard could it be? Maybe he had an inventive mind. Wouldn't it be the first time wouldn't it be the first time someone's figured it out? Yes, he could have used a knife, but he didn't. Does it matter why? A little. In my experience, shooters tend to be cowards. It takes courage to have the decency to walk up and stab people. Guns are distant, easy to use. They don't cut your thigh when you put them in your pocket. How's that for an explanation? I guess it'll do. Don't be depressed, Noah. This is good. We're solving the mystery. I'm not depressed. I just don't want you to jump to conclusions all the time. As long as you arrived, who cares how you got there? Yes, it's the destination that counts, not the journey. I've never heard anyone say that. No, neither. Moving on, I can't believe you actually said Uzumaki couldn't hear you shut fire. We all know thin glasses and stop sound, it just muffles it. In the quiet of night, he definitely would have heard your voice and seen you panicking. As for him returning to the house and climbing through the window, that was just based on my earlier imagine, imagined scenario where I left and he entered. He could have just as easily come in through the front door. To be even more pedantic, we don't know what he was wearing. Maybe he was just like a ninja and had pads all over his body to prevent cuts. We'll never know. I hope it's the latter. To your point about opening the door and seeing him there, you're right. It would have been suspicious and hard to explain, but we would have had no right to detain him or look in his letter. He would have simply walked away and killed himself. Remember, he's counted, he counted on dying. As for why I wanted, he wanted to tell you, I don't know, ask Ume. If he really wasn't an orphan, then her whole motive theory flies out the window. I wouldn't say it flies out the window, it just needs some tweaking. It needed tweaking from the start, it never made sense, admit it. If Uzumaki wasn't an orphan, then why would the letter have said, now you're one too? Unless you're telling me Uzumaki isn't the killer. That's out of the question at this point. There's no reality where Uzumaki is not the killer. What if the letter didn't mean Uzumaki specifically? What if it really meant now you're one too, like this friend I know? That's a really stupid idea. And I was the one who thought of it. Not Yuzuki. Forget Yuzuki. Yes, Uzumaki could have been referring to somebody he knows. Somebody he cares about. Perhaps this is his way of making a friend for this person. A fellow orphan. Noah. Do you happen to know if his other client, Amane Kirishima, is an orphan? I don't. But don't you think that'd be a bit too much? How many orphans are there? Let's just assume she is one, so we can get back to the good part, which is my deduction. But Noah, don't you think that it would make sense that his motive was to make a friend for this person? Don't you think that, Noah? Please validate me. I never said I, it wouldn't make sense. I'll look into Amane Kirishima while you deduct away, Takuma. Look at Yazuki, doing something for once. In the meantime, let me lay down the final pieces of the puzzle. Dr. Uzumaki finished up his day at the office. When his last client left, he ate the chocolates and then prepared, prepared in advance. Being a doctor, at least in one sense of the word, he could probably get his hands on the poison quite easily. 
A few nibbles were all it took, and soon, stricken with pain, he cast the chocolate box into the pond. Perhaps he hoped that the chlorine would disguise his method of death a little longer, just in case someone tried to resuscitate him. Then at last he curled up to die, and so ended the tale of Uzumaki. A horror story to be sure, though personally, I was more intrigued than scared. There's no moral, but it's a nice story anyway. I try. What do you think, Noah? I think you guys haven't taken my case seriously enough from the start. There are still so many holes you only barely managed to plug. Because you insisted on keeping the investigation short and jumping to the culprit, there's a ton of stuff you haven't investigated. Don't worry. We always do a full investigation here at the YPDA. I'm sorry, but I have yet to see evidence of that. We have more time on our hands than you think. Or more time, more hands on our time. That's hilarious. You're completely right, Takuma. Obviously. So, was there anything I left out now? Or are you finally accepting what must have happened? I don't know what to think anymore. Would have been a half-hearted attempt on my part to reach out had gone terribly awry. The detectives hadn't been helping me at all. They've been going down the wrong route since they first began to investigate my parents' death. But maybe things would change if I made some small observations. Maybe... Was it even worth it? Takuma claimed Uzumaki committed suicide. But Rewa said she bought the chocolates. No? Would he have had the nerve to kill himself? Takuma claimed Uzumaki tossed the chocolates into the pond. How would he have got his hands on the poison? Ume claimed that Uzumaki was trying to make a friend for his other client, Amane. Um, we don't know if she's an orphan. We don't know if she had other friends. That is a terrible way to make friends, though. I mean, we don't know about these. Well, let's assume she's not an orphan, shall we? We could be lying. I guess we lie, don't we? It's kind of what we do. After this, I just give myself up, no matter the consequences. It was getting kind of embarrassing to see how clueless the detectives were. Uzumaki isn't the orphan. He's simply too cowardly. He wouldn't have been able to go through with such a violent plan. Plus, if what you say is true, that he committed suicide, why did he wait until his last client left to do it? Every second that went by was a second you could have shown up and disrupted his plan. The chances he would risk waiting that long is slim. Why don't I just kill himself right after killing my parents? And speaking of killing my parents, you've explained how Uzumaki had a gun, but remember my parents weren't killed with a gun. Yuzuki's autopsy results was that Hiroki and Noriko were killed by poison and a heart attack, respectively. So why didn't he, why didn't he shoot, just shoot them dead? Hurling the chocolates into the pond is weird too. It's not like we wouldn't have figured out poison did him in. And when he said he could have got his hands on poison easily, you made a critical mistake. He clearly wasn't the right type of doctor to get his hands on poison. And even if he could fool someone into thinking he was a medical doctor, I hate to break it to you, but Uzumaki was running his outfit illegally. It would have been extremely risky for him to buy poison, even under the pretense of medical study. Even if I let these arguments slide, there's still that stuff with Rewa. Why did she think that she bought the chocolates? Especially considering she was perfectly clear-headed at the time. Explain that one, Takuma. But I'm not finished. Umei's proposed motive is all over the place. But let me cut the fat and point out one big flaw with it. He you changed your motive theory so that Uzumaki was helping out his orphan client Armin Amane. Helping her by making a friend for her. By making me an orphan. But then why would he kill himself? And also, she isn't an orphan. I remembered seeing her with her parents when I was going in for a session. I can't believe you think Uzumaki would believe this twisted logic. Either counter my arguments or please apologize. It's hard to find anything of substance in that argument, Noah. You accuse me of being speculative, yet your own counter arguments are often just as unsubstantiated. Uzumaki may have been a coward, but you could easily argue that suicide is a coward's sin. He probably waited until his last client left because she was already there. It would have been strange for him not to give her a session. Does that sufficiently explain it for you? Yes, Yuzuki said your parents died from poison and a heart attack, but she's often completely wrong about the autopsy. Hey, you're hurting my feelings. Fine. How about this? Uzumaki couldn't be sure that his homemade gun would be able to kill them, so he prepared alternative methods. He probably knew Noriko had a heart condition from his meeting with you. So he used a scary rabbit mask to trigger a heart attack. I know I'd have a heart attack if I saw a scary rabbit mask. Either that or because I was being shot at. That could also do the trick. Good point, Ume. With Noriko taken care of, he just slipped a spare chocolate into Hiroki, Hiroki's mouth. We just mistook the chocolate smear for lipstick. Hurling the chocolates in the pond is odd. But if that was going through going through convulsions due to the poison, it's not that odd. Your points about Rewa are hard to dispute, seeing as she isn't here. Yes, it's too bad she isn't right here right now, otherwise she might be able to settle things for us. Well, I guess that's that. You wouldn't know her. Stop! I'm here. I've been listening the whole time. Really? News to me. 
But anyway, do you happen to know anything about Dr. Izumaki buying poison and his medical, medical practice in general? Dr. Izumaki didn't buy any poison. He couldn't have because he wasn't a medical doctor. Also, he was practicing with a false license. Oh, I wasn't supposed to tell you that. My bad. Hmm. If he wasn't a real therapist, then I guess we're stuck. However, once I caught him taking a few of my pills, I said, if you're feeling anxious, maybe try therapizing yourself. He just stared at me coldly. What kind of pill? It was called Happy Max. That's a pretty dangerous pill. Never heard of it. It's also called Lagnomozapam. Oh, I have heard of it. This is it, Tacoma. Lag Lagonomozapam can be deadly if combined with a few household items. I've heard it called the Detective's Lament as well, because it's so convenient for criminals to take advantage of. It kills within half an hour when ingested. It's odorless, flavorless, and doesn't damage skin. Seems like it fits. Everything's falling into place, Noah. Now for the motive. Yes, I'm very insulted, Noah. You said some mean things about my motive theory. I looked into Amame, Amane Kurashima's background. She is not an orphan, but she is adopted. See what that means, Noah? My theory was right. Dr. Uzumaki knew that Amane was adopted, but he didn't know her that her real parents were still alive. He assumed she was an orphan. All along, he just wanted to make a friend for Amane. I think it fits nicely. I'd like to see you kind of that. No, Ume. Noah's feeble objections have run their course. We're not your allies, Noah. None of us are. We're only here to solve your case and take your money. That's the contract between detective and client. I believe I've crushed all your objections. That motive still makes no sense. The poison being Reiwa's drugs is way too convenient. Why won't you investigate Reiwa? Search her house. Search Uzumaki's house. The truth is still out there. All feeble objections, Noah. Let me show you. The truth of the case. It is simple. In it's simple, elegant detail. Okay. <laughs> Creepy. That rabbit mask is pretty creepy, man. Eat that. Well then, ah, the truth. Nice to have it around for a change. We solved the mystery, Tacoma. I'm proud of you, and I'm proud of all of us. We may add it to the finished case as well. Certainly. And tally up Noah's fee. Certainly. Overtime mystery cream, Yuzuki's midnight hairdresser, Yuzuki's midnight manicure, Yuzuki's midnight spa package. Day two, intelligent deductions resulting in the most correct answer imaginable. I'd say that sounds like 500,000 yen. That's your just flat rate for everything, huh? We're just adding Yuzuki's expenses to the fee now. That way she doesn't run us into the ground. No, you've been awfully quiet. Is there something you wanted to say? That this is wrong. That you are wrong. That you've lost. Uzumaki can't be the orphan because I'm the orphan. I killed my parents. Look, Noah's confessing to us. I'm very flattered, Noah, but you're not my type. Can you please take this seriously? You've got it all wrong. I don't think so. We laid everything out very neatly, I might add. 500,000 yen, was it? Yep. Here. Don't close the investigation. Search my house again. I don't have very long. You need to find the truth. We'll gladly take your money, Noah, but we've already found the truth. You've had plenty of opportunities to prove us wrong, but you didn't. I'm sorry, but the investigation is closed. Why do I even bother? All paths lead to the same ending. You're never going to listen to reason and logic. We did listen. You're simply confused, Noah. Maybe once you've gotten over yourself a little, you'd be interested in joining our little team. We at the YPDA feel that certain members need to be replaced. You may not have realized it, but I was testing you throughout the investigation, seeing how sharp your mind is. I think you have what it takes, Noah. If Yuzuki does, then you do. You guys don't give Yuzuki enough credit. Oh, thank you for saying that, Noah. You're very kind to me. Because I know how it feels to be disliked. Maybe think about it and get back to us. The choice is yours. Was there even a point in considering his offer? I've been struggling to stay hopeful. But it seemed Takuma and the others would never listen to me. On the other hand, maybe that was a good thing. Maybe the only way to keep myself from slipping over the edge was to keep myself on edge. Constantly being scrutinized by the detectives, a pointless existence made useful through solving crimes. If there was ever meaning to be found in my life, there was a chance that I could find it there with them in the YPDA. Are these two different endings or what? I'm curious. 
join. Since I accepted Takuma's offer, I've made a few new. I've made many, many friends. Sorry, what did it say? I've made many new friends. There you go. I'm slowly finding that I enjoy life again. Perhaps the fate that I'd sentenced myself to was nearsighted. Solving crime, adjusting my focus on the world. I'm finally getting the help I needed. That end. All right, we got a second ending. Uh, so from that deduction part, that's when I'm going to kick back in on the next episode for the next ending. I don't know how much they're going to change because now we've had a guilty and we've had an innocent. I feel like all the guilties are going to play out pretty much the same and all the innocents are going to play out pretty much the same. But I'll only bring you back for major events, say. So that it, otherwise we'll just be going over the same shit over and over again. But we'll leave this one here. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one, Bruce.